ME347, Example 15. A converging diverging nozzle is attached to a large tank of air at a temperature of 300 Kelvin and a pressure of 250 kilopascals. In the diverging section, the pressure falls to 68.1 kilopascals before rising suddenly across a normal shock. At the nozzle exit, the pressure is 180 kilopascals. For part A, sketch the TS diagram for this flow. For part B, find the Mach number immediately downstream of the shock. For part C, find the pressure immediately downstream of the shock. For part D, find the Mach number at the exit. For part E, calculate the entropy change across the shock. Finally, for part F, find the pressures for states 1, 2, and 3 as defined in lecture for a converging diverging nozzle based on the specified upstream conditions. For this problem, we will assume steady uniform flow of an ideal gas with constant specific heats up to and after the normal shock. Also, we assume that for the large reservoir upstream of the nozzle, the air is stagnant with constant properties. Finally, we assume gradual area changes, which is needed for the flow to remain one-dimensional. To begin, let's look at a schematic diagram for this flow. The flow starts at the left in the large reservoir at zero velocity at the specified stagnation pressure and temperature. It then moves to the right in the x direction through the well-rounded inlet, the converging section, throat, and then the diverging section where the normal shock appears before the exit. The throat is labeled as T. The locations just before the and after the shock are labeled as X and Y, respectively and the location of the exit is labeled as E. Next, let's look at a sketch of the pressure versus X location for this problem. At the inlet, at X equals zero, the pressure is at the stagnation condition. It then expands as it moves through the nozzle to the throat at X equals X sub T. Because we know there is a normal shock in the diffuser, which can only occur if the flow is supersonic, we know that the throat must have reached a Mach number of 1 and is at the critical pressure. After the throat, the flow continues to try to follow an isentropic path. However, the exit pressure is too high, thus the flow is overexpanded and it must correct by going through a normal shock. The flow then continues isentropically to the specified exit pressure. For part A, we plot the temperature entropy diagram. The flow through the converging diverging nozzle goes from state zero in the large reservoir to state T in the throat, state X just before the shock, state Y just after the shock, and then state E in the exit plane. First, note that the flow is adiabatic even across a shock, so the stagnation temperature and critical temperature are both constant. Second, note that the flow before and after the shock are isentropic and lie along vertical lines. Third, note that the entropy must increase across the normal shock and the flow goes from supersonic to subsonic. Thus, the temperature goes from below the critical temperature at state X to above the critical temperature at state Y. Finally, note that the stagnation pressure decreases across the shock. For part B, calculate the Mach number just downstream of the shock. To do this, we'll require two steps. First, we use the isentropic stagnation relations to calculate the Mach number just before the shock from the known ratio of the upstream stagnation pressure and static pressure just before the shock. Solving for the Mach number, we get 1.500. Second, from normal shock relations, we can calculate the Mach number just after the shock to be 0.7011. Note that instead of using the relations above to calculate these values, we could have alternatively used either figures or an online calculator for isentropic conditions and normal shocks to determine these values. The same is true for all the remaining parts of this example. For part C, we calculate the pressure just downstream of the shock. From the normal shock relation for static pressure ratio, 
the known Mach number, and the pressure just before the shock, we calculate the pressure after the shock to be 167 kilopascals. For part D, we calculate the Mach number at the exit. Once again, now that we are past the shock, the flow is isentropic. To verify this is valid, refer back to our temperature entropy diagram for this flow. To do the analysis, we first use the isentropic stagnation relation for stagnation to static pressure ratio to calculate the stagnation pressure after the shock from the Mach number and pressure after the shock. Note that this pressure does not actually exist for our flow and we are just using it as a reference value for our calculations. Second, we use the same isentropic stagnation relation to calculate the Mach number at the exit from the known pressure at the exit and the stagnation pressure after the shock that we just calculated. The resulting Mach number is 0 0.6156, which is subsonic as expected for after a normal shock. For part E, we calculate the change in entropy across the shock. We begin by writing the relationship for the change in entropy for an ideal gas with constant specific heats. To simplify the calculation, note from the temperature entropy diagram that the change in entropy is the same for the static conditions from state x to state y as for the stagnation conditions from state not x to, to not y. Also, since the stagnation temperature is constant, the equation reduces to only being a function of the stagnation pressure ratio. Plugging in values for this ratio, we get that the change in entropy is 20.9 joules per kilogram Kelvin. Note that the entropy change is positive, as expected. For part F, calculate the pressures corresponding to states 1, 2, and 3 that we defined in lecture as follows. For state 1, the flow expands to the sonic velocity in the throat and then returns back to a subsonic velocity isentropically and to a pressure that is above the critical pressure. For state two, the flow expands to the sonic velocity in the throat and then continues to expand isentropically to a supersonic velocity and to a pressure that is below the critical pressure. Note that the pressure for state two is also called the design pressure for the converging diverging nozzle. For state 3, the flow expands isentropically to the pressure at state 2, but then experiences a normal shock in the exit plane and exits subsonically at a pressure above the critical pressure, but below the pressure for state 1. Before we begin our analysis, let's look at the temperature entropy diagrams for these three cases. For the first two cases, these flows are both completely isentropic, thus both lie on vertical lines. For the first figure, the flow goes down to the critical temperature, but then goes back up to state 1. For the second figure, the flow goes down to the critical temperature and then continues down to state 2 below the critical temperature. For the third figure, the diagram looks similar to the earlier one from part A, except that the exit at state E and the location just after the normal shock at state Y both also correspond to state 3. For a standard converging diverging nozzle analysis, to find the operating pressures, the ratio of the critical throat area to the exit area would normally be given. Then the isentropic relationship for critical throat area can be used to solve for the Mach number in the exit plane for state 1 and state 2. For this problem, the information given corresponds to a normal shock appearing in the diffuser, thus we cannot apply this relationship directly. To see how we will handle this, let's look at another schematic for this problem. To solve this problem, we break up the area ratio into a sequence that starts with the critical throat area before the shock to just before the shock, to across the shock, to just after the shock, to the critical area after the shock, and then finally to the critical area after the shock to the exit. Note this procedure is similar to the one we used to get the Raleigh pitot tube formula, which combined pressure conditions before the shock with pressure conditions after the shock. Mathematically, the calculation looks as follows. Note that we can cancel the area ratio across the shock, which is assumed to be very thin. For the remaining ratios, we use the isentropic relation for critical area and the corresponding Mach number.
plugging in the Mach numbers at state X before the shock, we get 1.176. At state Y, after the shock, we get 1.092. And at state E, in the exit plane, we get 1.170 for the area ratios. Note that if you divide the first two equations, you get the ratio of the critical throat area after the shock to before the shock, which is 1.08 for this case. More generally, the critical throat area after the normal shock is always larger than before the shock due to the increase in entropy across the shock. Finally, we combine these areas to get the desired area ratio of 1.259 for the exit area to the critical throat area before the shock. We now use the same isentropic relation for critical area with our area ratio to get the Mach numbers in the exit that correspond to isentropic flow. Note that this is a case where there is no closed form solution, so we must either use a figure or an online calculator to get the values of 0.5474 for the subsonic route and 1.6106 for the supersonic route. To see how this works using a figure, we are looking at the isentropic flow figure for an ideal gas with a specific heat ratio of 1.4. From the legend, we see that the area ratio corresponds to the solid black curve and the y-axis on the right. Using the value of 1.26 and the area ratio, we read over horizontally to the solid black curve and then read downward for the subsonic and supersonic Mach numbers. To calculate the pressure that corresponds to each of these Mach numbers, we use the isentropic stagnation relation for the ratio of stagnation to static pressures. For case 1, using the subsonic Mach number and the known stagnation pressure, we get a pressure of 204 kilopascals. For case 2, using the same equation, the supersonic Mach number, and the same known stagnation pressure, we get a much lower design pressure of 57.9 kilopascals, which is needed to obtain supersonic flow. Finally, for case 3, to calculate the pressure with the normal shock in the exit plane, we use the normal shock relation for the pressure drop across the shock. Furthermore, we realize that the pressure and Mach number before the shock correspond to the conditions for case 2. Plugging in these values, we get a pressure of 166 kilopascals.